thought I would show you another perspective here. This may give you an idea how much snow we've gotten just since 3 o'clock yesterday. It's a little hard to see, but this was all cleared off yesterday, so you can see how much snow we've gotten just overnight. It's pretty crazy, and it was snowing earlier. I had, I had jumped on earlier just to give you guys I jumped on earlier just to give you guys a preview of what's been happening over the last four days here. So it's been quite something, but it's it's just beautiful, untouched. It's just amazing. So I thought I'd show you that. I know it's through the screen, but I didn't get a chance to shovel that yet, and I don't want to ruin the door. So I'm going to pop us back in the house here and show you around a bit more. Look out, missus. Get out of the way. There we go. Okay. I'm actually going to spin this around this way. Okay, just a little preview of some of the construction that's been going on here. This was not there, nor was that wall that is directly behind the couch and chair there. You can see Eustace, he's hanging on the wall over there in the stairwell. And you've seen that backdrop before. Um, we put the stairs in and uh, finished the wall there. Uh, heading up into the loft, there will be a wrought iron railing going up the stairs. And then also in the loft, it's going around the loft up top there. So um, that will finish it off greatly there. And I'm going to slowly spin this way. There is a new beam in the kitchen um, that is was done last week one day after my live video. Good morning, Chad. And uh, drywall has gone up here in the kitchen, some T111 behind our uh, temporary counter there. And uh, we were planning to continue working. Um, and good morning, Tammy. Uh, in the kitchen today, we will just have to see what goes on because there's a lot of snow to be moved. I know Chad moved a lot of snow last week. So it's just that time of year, you know, we didn't really have a winter and now all of a sudden we're having one. Good morning, Angela. So things are progressing and uh, my house is still disheveled. There is just stuff everywhere, but it's, it's coming along and it's looking really, really awesome. It's so cozy and just progress is good. So I'm going to flip this around. Okay. So I'm really excited. I've got some huge celebrations right now. Um, I know this, for some of you, you're probably cringing when I say this, but I'm excited. I can actually shovel snow. Um, good morning, Kelly. It has been, well, it's been more than three years because I couldn't shovel it the year before because I was sick and, and had a hernia. Um, my whole abdomen area was swelled up for probably about two and a half, three years um, as a result of my illness. Um, my organs were swollen and very taxed and as a result of everything being so swollen there was no room for anything so I ended up with a hyenal hernia and I shared it with you guys before you know it just kept getting in the way I have always been very active in working out I've always worked my abs and I do that and the hernia would pop and I would just be so uncomfortable for, for a week or more and it was just a real drag and living our life the way we do it's really important that I have my core strength and I didn't and um, I just got really angry one day and I asked God to remove the hernia in Jesus name and it was gone and I know for some of you that might be hard to fathom but God does miraculous things that's just one of many that I've personally experienced and I was greatly celebrating that this week because for one um, we moved the mountain boy into his apartment some of you have been following us and him on bigger than autism and he is in his place so it is just the mountain man and I and um, he needed help so I was just so grateful and it just feels so good that is a form of exercise to me that is a time with God and it's just I love being outside I'm glad you love shoveling too Tammy it's just it's so awesome um, I love absolutely love being outside like that and that was just something I've always done on the farm we would shovel and then end up on the porch with hot chocolate and a fire burning and so and I did light a fire the other night after shoveling and just sat on my swing after I unburied it. 
and I'm gonna have to do the same today so this is simple pleasures but I am really celebrating that because that is just huge for me and I'm not having any real repercussions my abs are a little tight um, but my back is holding up my arms are holding up and the snow has been heavy yesterday I didn't do as well as the day before on um, the day before it was a lighter snow yesterday it was heavy today it's gonna be heavy so um, I'm just excited those are that's progress and um, it's just gotta thank him gotta thank him for everything and also guys you know we are being so blessed for our um, faithfulness to him and for following his lead when everybody else thinks we're nuts and just totally trusting in him he has just so greatly greatly blessed us the last two weeks it's really truly insane and uh, all the things that are unfinished in the house right now need to be finished by the first no later than the second week of March so that we can get this listed and one of those weeks in between is going to be a down week for us because we have other responsibilities. So we are going to be really, really crunching. And um, just ask that you keep us in your prayers uh, for strength and endurance. And, and uh, you know, it's real easy to get tired and, and worn out. I mean, we're really pushing between taking care of the snow and, and taking care of day to day and then trying to get this done. And the guys have been working but the snow um, has really made it very difficult this week because we need to make sure that we can get in and out of here and um, Glenn's been helping some other people to make sure they are able to get in and out so just a lot it's a lot so the thing is you take one day at a time as I've been telling you and Monday was a minute at a time Monday was a really weird weird day back here but we were so blessed but it was you know you you gotta you gotta work with what you've got and you gotta work it well and that's what we're gonna talk about today um, we're talking about what all this has to do with preparedness and homesteading I've been talking about goals and planning and organization and decluttering and um, staying out of complacency and all these things what does it have to do with preparedness so if you guys feel that these videos have been helpful to you please share them um, especially while you're live that we can get some other new uh, community members joining us but um, for those of you that are new to Treyer Wilderness my name is Tammy Treyer I am an author and a writer a blogger and we live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho my son my husband and I embarked on our journey in 2010 and lived in a canvas wall tent for eight and a half months on this raw property while we were building our home and we feel very led to educate on our lifestyle and share what we do here the skills we use here and we also educate at treyerwildernessacademy.com and there will be a lot of new courses coming out um, hopefully by the end of February um, on that down week um, I will actually be recording a lot so and I want to say right now to all of you many of you we connect with outside of this Facebook live if I am not getting back to you right away in messaging for the remainder of the month just know I love you and I thank you for praying for us and reaching out to us because that is my biggest struggle right now is keeping up with everything. It's just crazy. It's so, so crazy. But how are you guys doing? What are your struggles? What are your celebrations? Um, I, I think that we should all have both. Um, it's just, it's a common thing. We're going to have struggles. Um, but the thing is, too, we need to keep our eyes open and focus on the gratitude. And that was something else that we've been talking about. And that plays a role in preparedness and homesteading, too, which I am going to start delving into in a little bit here. But I want to hear from you guys. Talk to me. Tell me what some of your struggles are. Tell me how you're progressing. And thank you, Chad. I appreciate that. Your prayers every day are so much appreciated. And they are being sent right back to you, my friend. And all of you, we are just so grateful to have such an awesome, awesome community um, surrounding us. It's been a really awesome journey. Uh, this has been a really grueling walk, but because of the people in our lives and our true faith, um, 
and our, our faith walk, God has just truly been working miracles and I wouldn't trade this walk for anything. I want to mention a couple things today. Um, one is I am, I am enjoying um, herbal coffee along with um, reishi mushrooms, turkey tail, chaga, and lion's mane. And you can find those at Real Mushroom. So by going to treyerwilderness.com slash real mushroom. The reason I am mentioning this is because turkey tail and reishi especially are extreme immune healers. They are such amazing mushrooms to help improve and heal the immune system. And I need that as much as I can get. So for those of you out there that do have immune issues and healing issues, um, I want to recommend Real Mushrooms because they are out of Canada and they are utilizing a very strong strain, very pure strain of these mushrooms. I have to be careful because the mushrooms fall into that category of molds and funguses and and my body does not break those down so I have to be careful of my intake of them and kind of monitor it but um, I want to try to benefit my body as much as I can in its healing process so I am enjoying those let me see here Tammy says I'm getting more things organized around here slowly but surely yeah you know and that's that's just it it's there's so much and there's so many rooms and it's very easy to go from one room to the next and cause yourself overwhelm. Um, I've been experiencing that a little bit. I think maybe that's what my Monday was about because I am taking things from our home into storage and you know you find things in one room that belongs in another. So I'm going to make a suggestion for you all. Start in one room when you're decluttering. And when you find things that go into other rooms, start making piles for each of those rooms. And enter those rooms when you're done organizing the room you're in. And, and go from there. It makes it so much easier. Kelly says, Tammy R., I've been going room by room, decluttering and deep cleaning. It feels good and somewhat overwhelming too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I think it was you, Kelly, that mentioned it to me. It was either Tammy or Kelly on a private message that um, it's hard this time of year because you don't have anywhere to go with things. I have this huge box of stuff that's for sale. And that's another big blessing. We've been selling a lot of things. I sold my 1800s antique armor this week, which was such a blessing. I've had that for 15 years. But um, it was quite the blessing and big help to help us purchase more materials to be able to finish this off. So as you progress through that, and it's funny too, the more you progress in your decluttering, I think the more you hit a point where you just want to take a big trash bag and you realize that there's nothing of value, even though there is value to it. You could maybe earn a couple dollars on it or someone else could benefit from it. But I'm just to the point where stuff doesn't matter and I don't want it. And I, I was actually joking with the mountain man yesterday and said, you know what? I'm going to invite people over and tell them, look, if you see something that you like that will fit your house, take it with you. <laughs> so that would be a great and easy way to declutter. But this time of year makes it tough, especially now that we've got snow because, of course, what week did I start um, taking things to our storage um, when it snowed? So I've been reshoveling and shoveling and reshoveling a path to the storage shed so that I can put things out there. Angel, oh, uh, let me see here. I'm going back. Kelly says, love mushrooms and uh, use them when I feel my body needs them. Yeah, they are really very powerful. Chaga is great for cancer and healing cancer. I've been drinking chaga for a long time because one of the side effects of my illness is that it causes cancer in other parts of the body. It's common. So I've been trying to do as much preventative there as I can. Um, mind over matter makes a huge difference too, which we will be talking about next week. Um, Angela says we want to sell our place, but have a lot of work to do to get it ready. Clutter and repairs. Yeah, I hear that Angela. And it's really crazy. You know, we are, we've been trying to do this. We've been trying to work all summer long. The guys were milling lumber. So the lumber you see going up in the beams in the house were all, um, milled this summer. And um, 
in preparation for our work. And then you've got work and everything else that you've got to do. So trying to get the repairs in is really tricky. And now that we are really under the gun and crunching, you know, when we can get a day and just focus, which we've been fortunate with the snow, however, we've been removing snow, you know, we've been able to get quite a bit done. The next big project is going to be our ceiling, and that's going to get T111, and we will be probably re be recruiting uh, man hands for that because I can shovel snow, but putting stuff up over my head and being on scaffolding and... I just don't know that I'm going to be of good help to him. So we will be recruiting probably some man hands for that project. But it shouldn't take long, and that is the, a big, big part of our repairs. But it is difficult, and it's difficult to do your repairs while you've got things in the house. That's part why I'm shifting things out. The other reason that I'm shifting things out is so that we can get a photographer in here to get photos so that it can get listed and that all this clutter is gone. So it is a challenge, but keep doing it because trust me, you will feel so much better and it's so nice to just be light and not have a lot of baggage. And being that we don't know what we're doing moving forward, it makes it really nice too um, that we won't have to worry about a whole lot of stuff. So or at least not as much as we had. Angela says, oh, that was the one I just read. And Kelly says, are you listing these things somewhere Tammy, okay, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, I don't know what just happened. It got really dark. I touched the screen and it did something real. Ah, sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. It's doing something weird here today. Anyway, yes, I am. There is a yard sale group um, lit, uh, on Facebook. You can go there by going to treyerwilderness.com slash yard sale. Um, and I'm glad you asked because everything that's in there, I'm going to start listing on eBay if it doesn't go because I got to get stuff out of here and I can't keep stumbling over all the things I have for sale. So you can go there and check it out in our yard sale page. And Chad says one of our Russian brothers here at work is having mushroom soup. Mushrooms from Alaska. Smells great. Oh, I love mushroom soup. That is one of my favorites. That sounds really yummy. And good soup. Oh, yum. Okay. Kelly says, also figuring the repairs and remodels with what we'll recoup when selling is key. We have a few big ticket remodels, bathroom and porch, and feel bathroom will recoup more for us. Yeah, um, we actually have a list to go off of right now. We asked the realtors, you know, we, we have, we're very limited. Thankfully, we've milled a lot of the lumber that we need, and we do have some materials here. Um, so when the money runs out, so do the repairs. It's just how it is. It is what it is. And so they gave us a list and an angle of attack of the things that we should focus on getting done, which was great. That also helped with the overwhelm and gave us, um, a material, a way to make a material list, um, as needed and pray for what we need in the meantime, you know, so Getting guidance from other people, regardless if it's me on Wednesdays or other people, you know, always seeking knowledge, always seeking direction, always seeking to plan will help keep things moving. Same with decluttering. It gets overwhelming. Pause. Take a break. Listen to some music. Walk away. Go for a walk. Go shovel. <laughs> That's what I did Monday. Um, all of that, you know, you, you learn how to work in with what you have work with your circumstances and learn how to work around you know those negative feelings that pop into place let's see I keep losing you not sure if it's on my side or yours it's hard telling Angela um, I am not breaking up for a change knock on wood um, but with the snow and the internet connection sometimes when it's really bad it might just be best to watch it on um, the replay if you are having struggles but I love your feedback and I love your comments I was there but it is it said zero listings hmm I don't know there's a whole it's um there's a lot of posts in there Kelly um, it's not like a sales group where it has all the different sales listings I did it as a regular group so if you scroll down you'll see the different things that are listed in the prices I hope that helps um, ah, I didn't want to do that. And there's weird things happening today. 
Okay, I think I answered everybody's stuff. I'm gonna try to flip now. There we go. Hey, okay. Sorry, that's weird. And it keeps getting dark. I think because when I move and you see the light, it's adjusting to the light behind me. Okay, now. Oh, thanks, Chad. Yeah, you do need to join the group. Um, Chad said it might be private. It is set as private or um, closed. So just request to join. I don't recall if you're in there or not, Kelly. But yeah, it is a private group just because um, I would... It's hard enough to keep up with everything else I've got going on. So I did it that way so that people could join. Um, okay, so with what we're talking about today and how all of this stuff that we've been talking about so far this year pertains to preparedness and homesteading. I'm going to give you an example here. We always have a plan or try to have a plan. We have a backup plan and then we have a backup plan for the backup plan. That's how we roll. We have to. Um... We are in a great place here, and we are back in, and um, for anybody looking to purchase our property, you can get in and out during the winter. We do have a really nice backhoe, and we have a very good mechanic, but we have made the mistake of not getting him the information he needs to further help us, and that would be Chad and his Vandal Services in Utah, so keep that in mind, guys. He does big equipment. Um, but our back hoe is down. It runs like a gem and both the hoe and the bucket work, but it won't move. So it would be really hard to creep it down the lane to remove the snow. Um, so we are doing what we can. Um, the lane was clear uh, 20 inches ago, um, but we've just been getting dumped on. Yesterday we finished shoveling at 3, and, <laughs> and at 3 o'clock... We came inside, and it just started to blizzard. I kid you not. I mean, it was just blizzard. And it just kept doing that all night long. So now we are back to square one, which is just how it is with snow. So what do we do? Okay, we have a generator, and it, it runs on gas. And we do have gas here, but we have limited amounts, and we try to keep um, a week's worth here at all times. Well, with needing to use other equipment and um, utilize a four-wheeler and different things, um, we needed to use some more gas. So, if we can't get out of here, right now the option will be to put chains on the truck and uh, put your foot on the pedal, say some heavy prayers, and go. And don't stop between here and the gate at the other end of the mile. That way we will get where we need to go. So... But I don't know if we'll make it from here to there or not. If we do, great, we can go get gas. If not, we will put a sled in the truck with the gas cans and turn around with snowshoes on, head back this direction with the gas cans and walk 10 miles round trip to go get fuel. So you have things in place. You do things that you need to do as you need to do them to make things work, to keep things moving, and to keep going forward. Right, guys? We're moving forward. Hello, hello, Diana, sweet friend. She says, hello, everyone. We are in western New York State visiting our grandkids. It's quite snowy here, and the Internet is spotty at times. I'll have to catch the replay. I miss being with you all. Likewise, we miss you too. And be safe and warm over there on the other coast. So that's the key, is moving forward and planning. Um, that was one of the first things we got when we, we uh, got out to Idaho was our snowshoes because we knew that we would need them more for play than for work. But we have done that 10-mile round trip multiple times on snowshoes, some of which led us to church on Sunday. And then we got a snowmobile, so we could do that. The snowmobile is down right now, though. It has some uh, bearing issues, I believe, if I recall correctly. So snowshoes it is. And I can walk for forever. I just can't stand for too long or sit for too long, but I can walk for forever. So that's no problem. And it's a great workout. You see great things. We often see the elk and the moose and all kinds of different animals. But these are our options, and this is what we need to plan for. And we know that we get more snow back here. Um, if we get a foot of snow back here out on the county road, um, they might only have four inches. We are in this little um, funnel that gets a lot more rain as well as a lot more snow. So, And we learned that early. 
So planning ahead is important. And the more we plan well to live life, the better prepared we will be for anything down the pike. And you got to believe that. You got to believe and understand that in survival situations, you need to be calm. You need to not be complacent because if you are complacent, bad things will happen. You are basically a sitting duck. You need to be focusing forward. You need to have a plan in place. You need to assess your situation. You need to evaluate, maybe set some goals. Same with homesteading. Homesteading involves work. And I love my life. I would not trade my life and the work we have for anything. But if I did not have a plan and a goal, I couldn't even imagine what this place would be like. We have to plan and we have to be prepared and we have to focus forward. Angelus is very little snow here. We get lots of rain. Summers are sunny. My kids jump up and down when we get snow, usually only two to three inches. Okay, well, we've had a very mild winter. It, it mainly rained more than we got snow. And honestly, that's one of my struggles out here is when we get a dreary winter. It is so gray, and I am so solar-powered, and I love being outside. So when it's gray and miserable, it just gets gloomy, and I just love the snow. It's bright. It's cheery. It's a good workout. And honestly, I'm also very excited and celebrating because um, our view is the mountains. And when there is not snow on those mountains and we head into spring, we're basically screwed. That means our dry summer season is going to be very riddled with wildfires and it's going to be really scary. So definitely pays to have snow this time of year and get the snow up on the mountain. And if we got 36 inches here over the last five days, that top of that mountain's got a lot more. So real excited about that. Kelly says, amen. Use your critical thinking skills and plan, plan, plan. Yes. So, you know, some people might be looking at our channel and going, all she's talking about is organization and goals and, you know, learning how to keep track of things. You know, that's kind of lame considering we're, you know, teaching preparedness and wilderness survival and homesteading. But you know what? These are your, this is the groundwork. This is the groundwork. You can focus through life and learn how to create habits that are healthy and good for you, to stay focused, to, um, like T uh, Kelly said, critical thinking and planning. Those are key things. Learning how to not be complacent and know that you've got to move forward and know that you've got to be able to um, be quick on your feet to think and, and to analyze and to organize it's all important stuff okay I am so Kelly says I'm solar powered too and take 10,000 IU of D3 in the winter you know what's crazy in the summer months it is so sunny and hot and dry here and I know you guys have the same in Montana and Idaho I don't know about Montana but Idaho is a state where majority of people are deficient in D3 and that includes construction people it's really bizarre. Um, you know, we're outside all the time, and, and our D levels are always low. So D is, D3 is really important to utilize all year round, really, because um, that really does improve and affect the body. Uh, let's see. Tammy says, I agree about snow. I'm so glad we finally got a bunch as well. And Kelly says, we're actually praying for snow because of summer wildfire season. Our winter in Montana has also been very mild. Yeah, and, and you guys had the winds and the wicked cold. I heard there were like 16,000 cattle that died over the last couple weeks with uh, all the really, really cold weather. That's just insane. That's insane. But this is winter, and this is the thing. You don't know from day to day what is going to happen. While I am recording this right now, the mountain boy messaged me and said I, we lost power. And then he said, are you there? Are you hearing me? <laughs> I know he's safe. He just doesn't have power. And um, things happen that fast and that quick. And, you know, yesterday when we came in, not only was it um, snowing, but it was the winds really picked up. And what day was that? Saturday morning, I had to go to town to pick up Bountiful Baskets, which is our vegetables for the winter months. And um, 
normally we don't have a lot of drifting between here and town, which is like 40 minutes away. And uh, it was quite crazy. Plus, it was 14 degrees. So everything that was in the sun was melting and the snow was blowing. So it was wet. So you don't know if that's black ice. You don't know if it's just water. And then you've got these incredible drifts going on the road. So, you know, you never, you never know, not just with the snow and the weather, but health and um, natural disasters and, you know, God forbid it ever happened, but the grid going down indefinitely and not coming back up, you know, that right there would be a place where you would have to utilize these skills to such a degree. You would need to be so on everything and that's what I want to teach you is learning how to incorporate this stuff into your day-to-day -day and getting good at it the biggest thing that I feel that we can do is learn to plan and learn to roll learn to roll with your circumstances you know we had the guys were supposed to work Monday the guys were supposed to work Tuesday here it is Wednesday they haven't worked they can't get out Monday they could get out and he plowed here and he plowed elsewhere but it took all day you know so you've got to learn to roll when our power you know if anything happens to our power we've got to roll you know we've got to learn how to do things um, with nothing and um, that has happened to us once while we're here only because of breaker blue. Um, other than that, for the last, this will be nine years, um, we've, never, we've never been without power. So pretty awesome considering grid statistics. We've got lots of comments coming through here. Okay, let me see. Tammy says, we had reached negative 30 one morning. That was without wind chill. That's insane. And then you have the wind chill on that yet, and that's, you guys had such heavy winds. As, and Kelly says, as you know, we chop wood and um, water in the winter, lol. <laughs> Our animals, waters were frozen solid a week ago due to sub-zero wind chills, and even on our frost-free hydrant, it's froze up and is still frozen. Wow. Yeah, it's just nuts. Absolutely, grid down will be horrible. Kelly says, and, and for the majority, yes. And that was, Angela says, our well pump is electric, so when power goes out, no water. So far, we don't have a generator. Yeah, so planning and budgeting for that. Huge, huge, huge thing. Because those are the things that we want to make sure that we have. And, and some form of an ability to keep our, our pipes from freezing. You know, that's, that's key stuff. But it's, you know, we, we have to learn... So crazy. It keeps getting dark. Um, we have to learn to prioritize our needs because there's no way we can all afford to do everything that needs to get done around our places. Guaranteed. You know, it's things are costly. And it all adds up. So being able to plan, budget. Budgeting we've slightly talked about, but budgeting is huge, and we are going to really hit that one hard too. Um Tammy said our frost-free um, hydrants freeze every winter. Yeah, and, and see out here, that's something that Glenn builds a lot of is pump houses. Pump houses and um, hydrant houses to keep those things from freezing for that reason because it is, it's common. We're in the Pacific Northwest. Kelly says how deep, how, oh, how deep, get a hand pump. They do have deep well hand pumps. I believe she's talking to you, Tammy, and yes, um, Oh, actually, probably Angela. And yes, um, there are a lot of other options. I think for $1,200 that you can get a solar um, pump also. Uh, but the hand pumps are great and, and um, necessary. You know, water's your main thing. Water's one of your main, you got food and water, and water comes first. Without water, your body's done. We, we are made up of liquid. We are made up of water. So that is the key thing. And um, I got to adjust. Like I said, I can't sit for so long. And it's, these stools are hard. Okay. Um, Angel says wood stove for heat and gas stove. Awesome. And, you know, you've got your resource out, outside. You know, I've got a ton of snow and it's untainted. Now, depending where you live, that may not be the case. But we are blessed to have everything untainted out here. So, wood stove, big buckets, 
lots of snow, you know, that's a way of getting water also. So, excuse me, thinking out of the box and um, being prepared to think of all these things um, and how you can adjust to accommodate them. Angela says, doing Dave Ramsey budgeting class at church right now. Well is 330 feet deep. Woohoo, you've got a deep one. But they do make they do make deep well pumps like that. And Dave Ramsey is phenomenal. When I talk on budgeting, it will be with Dave Ramsey. Um, I've done his, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Financial University. And I just love his materials. I listen to his podcast. So surrounding yourself with knowledgeable information and gleaning from people that are teaching good things is an awesome way to continue our journey and always seeking new knowledge. Let me see here. Kelly says, we've opted not to have a generator other than for a few weeks help. We're looking at solar generator for long term. Okay. Yeah. And um, generator would be needed. Okay. Are you saying, Kelly, um, the generator would be needed for the deep well pump? Is that what you were referring to? Yeah, um, we are we are hooked up that we can run our generator um, on the gray days, and our well pump is actually not directly plumbed into the house. It is into our breaker box, and then we fill a 275-gallon water tank in the basement um, that we then plumb into our home with an RV pump. So that way it's very efficient. It doesn't use a lot of our solar power, and, um, and we have water um, in the house at all times. Um, our well is only about 70 feet deep, I think. It is pretty shallow. There's some really cool shallow pumps available and some really, I have, I have something that I have to do a little research on for ourselves and when I do that I will share that with you all. Um, we were blessed, this is kind of funny, when we got here we weren't going to do a well, there was a hand dug well here and um, it just it was only root based it wasn't it wasn't going to work for us so we ended up having to put a well in and the wells out here are very deep like angela's and um oftentimes people out here have had to dig multiple wells till they hit water so it could have been a very costly venture which was a concern because we didn't have the money for that um so i did a lot of praying and when the guy came out here you know he he estimated at a 330 and um, I said it's going to be a 175 foot deep well with 30 gallons per minute and crystal clear water. The other thing out here is there's a lot of iron. Um, the realtor that sold us this house when we went into his house while visiting, it looked like somebody was murdered in the shower and most of the people here don't do their wash at their homes because of all the iron. Okay, so praying and praying. We ended up with a 150 foot well, 30 gallons per minute, and crystal clear water. It is an awesome well. So we got really lucky. So power of prayer, guys. But yes, um, does anyone store water? Chad says, yes. Um, that is extremely good comment and extremely important because you should have at least... Um, four to six gallons of water per person in your home set aside somewhere. In my food storage room, I have gallon jugs and I have um, water bottles. Uh, just in the event something were to happen, we have water here, we have snow, we are close to a river, we could get water, but that is huge. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, let's see here. Kelly says, yes, Tammy, 330 foot is deep for a hand pump. All right, so these are the things that you guys are aware of that give you struggles during your winter months. So what I suggest you do is you do your research and find what will work best for you in those situations and what are some things that you could do to um, eliminate freezing. Um, sometimes you just can't, especially in your environment when you've got, you know, negative 30 and 70 mile an hour winds and everything going on 
And Kelly says, yes, and we live on a river and have a very good water filter. Berkey, great. Awesome, Chad. He says he has four 55 gallons. So that's absolutely awesome. Um, having as much water available if you don't have access to water. Um, Chad's in the city or outside of the city. So um, being able to... Um, have that water because if the grid were to go down or your power goes out for more than three days, you know, even a day, if you don't have water, you're sunk. Plus, you know, if things go down, like um, not last year, but the year before, we had a lot of rain, a huge amount of rain for winter. And we ended up with major mudslides out here, roads just totally disappearing. Um, one of our main roads in was... Um, removed in a mudslide almost there was like just enough for a lane and they had to repair it in order to be able to use it so it was shut down for quite a while the other road into our valley was flooded so the big trucks couldn't get in and if you live day to day in the grocery store or even week to week in the grocery store you're going to end up in a situation where there's nothing on the shelves and there isn't going to be water so you need to really think about those things and, and plan and prepare. But all of what we are talking about pertains to the unexpected and um, preparing for our homesteads and our, our goals in our futures of our homes. You know, everything we are learning will help you to be able to, in a very healthy, organized, no stress way be able to prepare yourself for when things do happen and then when those do things do happen there won't be the stress that there would normally be because you are in a situation where you are learning to roll with the punches you are learning to be prepared you've already got angles of attack in place for things that are a struggle for you and that makes life so much better. I couldn't imagine living by the seat of my pants. I used to say that we, we rolled by the seat of our pants, but it was at our pace that we rolled by the seat of our pants. Not how we viewed things, not how we prepared for things. We always have always had a plan in place, a backup plan, and a backup plan for the backup plan. Always. That's just how we are. Now, there's been a bunch of comments. Let's see here. Okay, Angela says, we have looked into collecting rainwater, but Oregon laws apparently don't allow it. The rain belongs to the state. I know, isn't that great? And that's something else that we've really got to focus on, guys. Um, I'm going to say this just briefly, but there have been a lot of things going on um, in our country. Uh, for example, with the abortion laws that are changing and, you know, um, we have local legislation and what I am finding is the people that want to argue the benefits of these laws like that one right there that are taking our rights away they want to argue them and they they are arguing them based on what they've heard but the majority doesn't read the laws and the legislation and the thing is we need to stay on top of that there are many states that you cannot live off grid because it is illegal they don't want you off the grid they want your money they want your tax money we need to pay attention to what is being done around us or more of that is going to happen how ridiculous is that that the state owns the water and let me guess they're doing nothing with it but they're not allowing you to, to utilize it and collect it is ridiculous and it drives me absolutely nuts to the core. Um, we really need to pay attention to what is going on around us and, and stand up for our rights because as they start taking little things away, that's just opening the door for them to then take bigger things away. And I heard it put this way the other day on a video by the Patriot Nurse and I thought it was phenomenal. We are like um, the whack-a-moles. Right now, all the legislation that's going into place, they're putting new stuff into place like that fast. And they're sneaking things in. And those are the things that are being snuck in in legislation, and we miss out on it. 
So guys, we've got to pay attention to what is going on, not just at a state and federal level, but at a county level too, because there was legislation put in place here for animal um, abuse, but it is limiting um, us homesteaders as to what we are able to do on our land. And, and it is allowing them to come in and infringe upon what we do on our property. Uh, -uh. so, and, and, you know, it, in communicating on that, that was another situation that people just, they don't know what the legislation says, but they're going to stand up for it because of the animals being abused and not realizing what else it's removing from us. And I, I will be the first one to say, my animals are my family. I don't want my animals to be injured or anybody else's animals to be injured, but you need to read the legislation. I'll get off my soapbox, but that has been something that has been going on recently that has just been stirring me up. These, you know, um, the, the abortion laws that have been passed recently, not in New York, but um, it's, it's, it's scary. It's really scary what's happening. So please, please, please pay attention to what's going on in our country and around you. And yes, Angela, that sucks because there is that rainwater that you could be utilizing. And yes, living in the city requires us, Chad, to definitely be more prepared in ways because the things that we have at our ready aren't there for you. Plus, in a city, you've got a lot more contamination in the um, things such as water, um, versus where we are located. So it's important for all of you to keep that in mind and really think about where you will get things if all of a sudden these things are no longer available. And that is so important. Okay, let me see. Tammy says, we don't get enough rain to collect rainwater. We did collect in Missouri. Awesome, awesome. Kelly says, our town blew a mainline water main and was out of water for three days. It was panic for majority. The fire department took trucks out to give people non-potable water for flushing toilets. Yes, yeah, see, the majority of people live a life, fast-paced life, focusing on making money to buy things that they don't have time to use because they're making money. And they're living on, you know, um, the world's, I just totally went blank, um, creature comforts and not focusing or thinking that anything could happen. And if it does, it's not going to affect them. And guys, you know, Three days without water, um, you know, with the Hurricane Michael, there was total devastation down there. Some of those photos were just insane. I follow a fellow that was down there, and, and he said, you know, how he walked into a store. The store's shelves were getting bare, and, um, you know, it was really, um, there was no way to get um, trucks in. They were on their last fuel for their generator to keep the store running and but there was hope things were turning around down there but had there not been hope there were kids in the parking lot and they were just joking but they made the comment now we could go and, and loot this store and and the guy said you know they were just joking and and that's clearly what they were doing but that's exactly how it's going to start that people are joking, they're finding it funny, they're thinking it's cute, but all of a sudden panic sets in when they realize that what they're surrounded by is a situation that's not going to change for a while. And then the reality sets in and the panic sets in, where if we are planning ahead, we don't have that panic. I don't want that panic. I don't want to be worried. I don't want to have to think then of things I should have thought of a long time before. So that's why I'm teaching this. Kelly says they call taxes, fees, and getting away with it. Sad, sad, sad. Yes, on the grid and everything else. And those taxes keep going up. And, and we should have the freedom to decide how we wish to live. Um, I just think it's nuts. Like I've always said, we, are, we, are in, um, we were born 100 years too late, for sure. Chad says some states own the mineral rights, therefore they own the aquifers, and they say the rain is how they get filled. Yeah. 
it's really it's really quite crazy um, how they are utilizing and and pulling into these this legislation in areas so we really really need to be careful um, we literally live in a rainforest I believe it we have a spring rainy season and a fall rainy season our first year here we got here on May 21st and right around the beginning of June it started to rain we were living in a canvas wall tent and it rained for an entire month I kid you not we had four we had we got here and three days later we dug our footers and then like three days later our footers got filled up and we had to keep pumping them and then we finally realized that maybe God was telling us we aren't supposed to build there so we filled those footers in and changed the location of our home and it stopped raining but we do get that month of rain every spring and every fall and it uh, it's clay out here so it is just one muddy mess and um, and other than that though we don't get a lot of rain in between especially in the summer so you know um, g gathering water would be useful for us for our garden greatly uh, we didn't put that into place that was the game plan but and also feeding our animals but we did not put that into place I got sick and we just kind of had a halt on everything um, Chad says no sound for me. Whew, that's weird. You can't hear me? There we go. Okay, I'm back. Okay. The mountain man would be like, oh, that's good. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Kelly says, or they fall back on big government, we'll take care of them. It's sad beyond sad. Yeah, you know, it really, really is. People think that the government is going to come in and take care. And, um... You know, sadly, we also have big pharma in that, too, um, in regard to uh, that whole scenario of things. And it's a really scary situation. There are so many people dependent on um, what is around them, what is available to them, and don't stock up anything, as well as, like you said, depending on the government to just be there and take care. And that's not going to happen when everything goes to heck in a handbasket. Mimi says, I'm sad that I really can't run a homestead of my own anymore. I would really love it, and I'm sure I'd probably be a lot healthier than I am right now. But my health took a dive after I left my, I imagine, let me see if it'll let me click on it. Uh, Mimi, I can't see the whole, darn, I can't see the whole thing. But yes, and you know what, though? Keep this in mind. You can homestead from wherever you are. Whatever resources are available to you, whatever you are able to do in the space you are in, all I can say is do it. Do it, do it, do it. We are going to be in a situation when this house sells that we truly don't know exactly what we're going to do. It's going to depend on what the house sells for. It's going to depend on what God directs us to do. Um... The initial plan was to build a 20 by 20 tiny house and just pause for a year in our life and build that and just exist for a while, get our back on our feet. But maybe that's not what God wants for us. So we have a tentative plan. And um, if we aren't able to do that, we're going to live in a, in a small camper if we're able to. And, you know, but who knows? You know, God could say, you know, okay, your house is sold. Now you're going to Guam. I need you on mission, you know, and I would love to do a mission trip. I would love to uh, be able to do that in my life. And, you know, so I don't, I don't know what God has in store for us. But the thing is, live your day to day doing the things you love to do and doing whatever you can do, the best you can do in the situation that you're in. I think that, um, you know, being able to raise six chickens is better than you know having nothing and um, maybe meat rabbits or whatever the case may be growing a small vegetable garden even if that means on a porch in in different pots you know um, do what you can do where you are because oftentimes people wait to be in this perfect scenario and that perfect scenario is never going to happen it may never happen I mean I'm a very optimistic, positive person, and I, I try to will things to happen in my life if they are lined up with God's will. But, you know, ultimately, not everything on my list and on my checklist is going to happen. And 
we need to be willing to accept that and roll with it and do what we are able to do otherwise. Um, not having expectations is an awesome thing in life. Really, I learned that on the farm and I thank my dearest friend Julie for that because she told me that when you have expectations in life, you have a lot of disappointment. Gosh, that is so true. I mean, that was just kind of like a smack in the forehead kind of comment. That is so true. So I live with no expectations of people, um, of life around me. Um, I might have expectations of myself, but I think it's more goals and plans, not necessarily expectations. I have a to-do list, not expectations. And I hold myself to high value, um, but that's morals and ethnicity, I think. You know, my ethics. So I don't, I don't think I have expectations of myself. And not having expectations of anything else around me makes my life so pleasant. Oh my goodness. So I want to encourage that of you guys too. Now, let me see here. Uh, Chad says, whoop, here we go. How about getting hurt or losing a job? Store food, water, fuel, staples, and stay out of debt. Okay, really good. Really, really good. Okay, 2016, well, it was actually 2015. This is what it looked like. Um, we, we try to keep at least three years of food in our food pantry at all times. Um, I'd have to say it's probably more than that most of the time. 2015, I'm out for the day delivering three cords of firewood with the mountain boy. We loaded them, we unloaded them, I felt great. I come in for the night and we sat around the fire and I had absolutely no strength in my hands. I went from lifting 75 pounds on a weight bench to not being able to pick up a quart jar half full with oatmeal in it. Reality. It went that fast and it was a real eye opener. And we went seven and a half months without an income. We made it to Georgia for extreme life saving surgery that was very costly. Um, we stayed there for 17 days. Now, we are in debt. We are in medical debt. But we never starved. We made it to Georgia by the grace of God and by faith. And we always had a meal on our table. Several times this year, um, right before hunting season, about four weeks before hunting season, we ran out of meat. We were blessed with meat by one of our dear friends. Now, I could have eaten what was in our food cache. My guys are meat men. I think it's just a guy thing. They're meat and potato guys, you know, and, that, and they, do, they work hard. They need the protein. So my guys don't do real well without meat in their diet. But... God provides. We got our uh, freezer filled in hunting season. You know, I think that the more we focus on being prepared, the more prepared we are for what comes ahead. The other thing is this. This is really important, and I know, Chad, you totally get this. Um, we need to be prepared, but not so prepared that we remove God from it. And what that looks like to me is that we are always looking to God for guidance. We are always focused on God, but we are preparing and doing our due diligence. But that does not mean that we don't have faith in God to provide. Um, if God tells us to wait, we wait. We've waited in January. It was a very awing time. We listened to God. God put us in a very scary place, a very, very scary place. But we f knew what he, that we were hearing his voice because the mountain man and I both were hearing it. And we both got the same instruction. So we honored it and we listened. And, and God strips us sometimes and he takes us to those scary places. When we went seven and a half months without an income because the guy, Glenn couldn't work while he was taking care of me. I couldn't work in the state that I was in. So, you know, when we prepare and we follow Dave Ramsey's uh, mindset too of having $1,000 in an emergency fund and six months of bills in, in savings, you know, when that happens, we're much better off and we will remain debt free. But when you're in that circumstance and you're not in that position and all of a sudden it all falls apart, you end up where we are. Like I said, I would not change where we are for anything. There's been so much growth and so much amazing stuff. But that place God put us in January, he blessed us so greatly in February so far for our faithfulness. So being stripped sometimes creates empathy in us. It creates experience in us. It enables us to help others by uh, sharing our journey, sharing our walk, sharing our experiences. But these are the things that I am so very strong about 
that I've been teaching you all year and what Chad is touching on is it to a T is being prepared for all those things, keeping God in the picture and, and being ready to roll when stuff crumbles because stuff happens. Stuff is going to happen. Don't know what it could be. It could be financial. It could be health. It could be anything. It could be the job. But stuff is going to happen. Stuff is always going to happen. Um, every year is a character building year. And how we roll with that year and grow in that year is how we benefit. That's our future and, and how we've progressed. I am going to move to the corner of the couch real quick here because my battery is dying. So bear with me. I'm sorry, missus, but I'm going to end up having to move you. Okay, beep, beep. Watch your bottom. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay, woo! It is very warm in here. That is a good thing. It'll feel really good when I come in from shoveling, but it is really warm in here right now. It's probably getting red. And I know there's a bunch of comments, so bear with me here. I just needed to plug that in. Okay, so that's better. Now, um, Angela says, I can food and buy it in bulk, but I'm terrible at organizing it. So some goes to waste and food fills our space too much okay well we can talk about that upcoming because it is important to rotate your food I can food too and I buy in bulk um, one thing I am finding it to be very important um, especially um, I was setting up the mountain boy in his place with his food and it's important that you recycle your that you circulate your food and learning how to to, to do that and to um, you know put it on your um, to-do list maybe you know once every three months once every two months that you go through your food supply it's really important um, because you want to make sure that you don't waste your hard-earned money and that you're not filling up your space with things that um, you don't need anymore so that is definitely something we can talk about because that is really really important it's great to have a food cache and to say you have a food cache but if the majority of your food cache is no good um, it's not going to serve you well because it's going to make you sick um, food does not break down well if you've watched any of the documentary series that I've shared on Treyer Wilderness you've seen how old how pasta today you know the GMO pasta doesn't break down in your digestive system you know this stuff doesn't break down so then you've got the additives and preservatives in your food that will not break down um, Mountain Ben when he was here um, bought a camper and there was old hot chocolate in the camper so for kicks and giggles he thought he would see what would happen with it it was probably 20 years old so it was way old but he dumped the powder into a cup of hot water and there it sat it never dissolved so you have to realize that what we are, you know, that what is put in our foods to preserve it is going to eventually hit a point where it's not going to break down. And that is toxins and poisons in the system. I can't, I can't do that. So that's why most of our food is either canned um, vegetables and fruit, canned meat, or preserved meats. Um, you know, we do buy our staples, and everything that we purchase as a staple is non-GMO um, because I can't eat otherwise. So it is important, but we will talk about that, Angela. That's a really good topic. And Mibi says, at least I do have my mobile right now that I can sort of homestead from. Awesome. You know what? Do it where you are, girl. Um, because I know that mentally and physically you will be health healthier because you will be doing what you love and desire to do. And I know that's in you. I've talked to you enough over the years, sweet friend. I know that will help you so much. Okay, Angela says, what was that book? Square Foot Home Stealing or something about being on a quarter acre. Oh, there's a couple of those. Um, I'll have to research that. I have it in my notes. And we can um, share that. But yes, uh, being able to, square foot gardening is amazing. And being able to utilize flower beds and to utilize buckets and to use window planners, all kinds of stuff, hanging planners. You can do so much. Angela says, we hunt fish, raise animals, and put in the freezer. We've lost lots of meat from freezers going out. Should probably can it instead. Well, and it is nice to have the canned meat for that reason, but 
I like my roasts. I like being to cut up, being able to cut up my roasts into steaks or um, we do stir fry different things. So I do enjoy having my my big roast, my neck roast. Um, I did do a video. I believe it was a video. I know I did a blog post on it. But how a quarter can save you thousands or hundreds, hundreds or thousands of dollars. Take a canning jar, you know, one of the jelly jars. Put water halfway in it and put it in your freezer and let it freeze. And then put a quarter on the top or any kind of change, a penny, a dime, doesn't matter. You put it on the top of that and you put it in your freezer. And that way if the power goes out, you will be able to tell how thawed things got and how bad things got. Like say you're not at home and you come home and the freezer's uh, been off and, and you panic because some stuff is thawed. But by seeing where that coin is in, in the water, if it's at the bottom of the jar, it's likely that everything is th you know thawed and damaged. If it's just down a little bit, it just slightly unfroze. I, at that point, I, I personally, I wouldn't throw it away. I'd refreeze it or I'd pull out what has thawed and I'd can it. So um, that's just a tip for you. Sometimes it's total loss. I realize that. And that does suck because that's so much meat. And I know what it takes to harvest them and to do all that work. So that is, that is very difficult. But yes, canning. I mean, we did 113 quarts of venison. Uh, I think that was 2013 because we had, I think it was five deer that year that needed to be canned because the moose filled the freezer. So really good stuff. Okay, Penny says, and hello, Penny, God expects us to do the work and by our side while we do it. Amen. Amen. That is totally it. And, you know, because I've had people say both sides of the spectrum to me that, you know, well, God doesn't want you to be that prepared. He does want us to be prepared. He wants us to do our work. He wants us to do the due diligence on our part. The part where he doesn't get removed is that we keep seeking him in all of our circumstances. But we are supposed to be prepared. Are you like a popsicle? No. I'm not. Kelly says, yes, we lived for six months almost solely from our pantry due to medical bills and travel. We were out of milk and I prayed. Later that afternoon, a dear friend showed up with milk. She said she... Probably was prompted. I can't see the rest of the message, but that's fantastic. That's phenomenal. And that's just it. You know, we, we prayed because we didn't have any meat in the freezer and our friend provided. So, you know, God answers our prayers and that's just it. In those circumstances, you know, when, when we are preparing and we are doing our due diligence and things happen, you know, there is great power, great, great power in prayer, guys. Um, my journal, by the way, I am excited because I told you my journal was something that I'd always start and never be able to continue. I haven't missed a day. And this journal is going to end up being a book. I am quite certain of it because the things that have been happening on our day to day, you just can't make up. And, you know, we give you glimpses of our life, but if you guys could see what the day to day is like and the pace we are running, it is just insane. When we sell this, we will both be just sitting and going, greatly. I know we both will. Okay, here we go. Chad says, God provides to everyone every day. If you wake up in the morning and your heart is pumping, he has provided. Amen. And you are breathing. Exactly. And he will. He will truly provide for all of our needs. He will take care of us. He is a loving God. And so if you are a Christian, you know, you do need to do your due diligence. You do need to do your work. You do need to be prepared. You do need to think of yourself and your family. And you need to seek God's direction for that. You know, like for us, you know, he told us to wait in January. and January we waited. And, you know, we did not have the funding to buy milk. We didn't have the money to, to buy eggs. But God is providing. You know, we had plenty of food. We did not go hungry and as a matter of fact when we pray for our meals we are in awe at the good meals that we are having preparation provides that for you I have all my spices I have all my um, raw ingredients I can make anything we need and I am teaching the mountain boy how to do the same thing we did his grocery shopping for him he had to stay here and keep an eye on the house and the dogs we had to run and it was an all-day affair so we just picked up his grocery list 
and and he learned what his necessities are what he needs to make everything he needs just from raw ingredients so it's really awesome when we can teach our children that and then that our due diligence our preparedness and all of that trickles down into our children so it they see what we're doing and they understand it and they learn it and teaching it is just as important so you know make sure you include your kids in your planning and your goals and your budgeting um, I took the mountain boy with me to financial university I um, incorporate a budget and work on a budget with him and his apartment so and keeping track of his checkbook and doing his register you know these are things kids need to know how to do schools don't teach it and when I'm the teacher it's my job and I I, I wanted him to be well set to take on life and to be successful at it and that's what we need to do for ourselves and our children okay let's see here Chad said he is giving people every chance to come to him do you know him please PM me if you have a question thank you Chad Chad is one of our greatest prayer warriors and um, that's the thing guys do you know him um, I want to mention something today um, that I want to highly encourage you guys to look into the movie the shack was a controversial movie because of how the um, author depicted God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the, the Trinity and um, just for some of his choices of words in his book but he proves those words over and over again through the book through the movie and through a um, devotional that is free on Amazon Prime so I want to encourage you to either read the book The Shack or read that and watch the movie but you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash the shack and then after you've done that I encourage you to step into watching the 20 um, different short videos they're like 20 25 minutes I think I don't think they go over even go over 30 minutes I think we're on 16 the mountain man and I have been enjoying them greatly they really make you think and they really make things clear and if you are um, new to Christianity I think it's a really awesome tool to help explain things if you have been a Christian for a long time I encourage you to walk into it with an open mind because he does prove his points and it's really really interesting um, and just really a healing tool to get over forgiveness for one that is what the main precedence of the book and the, the topic of the book is about is forgiveness but uh, treyerwilderness.com slash the shack and treyerwilderness.com slash the shack revisited I will put links below I wasn't intending to mention that today that was going to be a separate video but since we're talking the way we are I really want to encourage you guys and since Chad brought that up and and PM Chad he is a great um, example he he walks it he talks it so does Tammy and Kelly and um, many of the people on here and you can p private message me you can email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com um, for prayers or to know more about Jesus because I couldn't imagine my life any other way I couldn't imagine my life without him in it I couldn't imagine where we would be walking this walk because our faith and our trust in God is what is enabling us to keep a positive mindset knowing that the outcome of this situation is going to be awesome because he's not going to leave us to be hurt he's going to help us and he's going to love us and he's gonna love us on this journey and he has and he is and I, I fully trust that um, so if you guys know people that could um, you know that need the Lord or that you yourself have questions please don't hesitate it is an amazing walk and um, I like I said I couldn't imagine life without him in it so thank you Chad that was awesome uh, Tammy says I have to run need to get the cat and dog to the vet take care everyone and God bless God bless beautiful friend and um, Penny says bad gut health um, I'm not sure why you said that is that because you have it or a result of some of the food issues I was talking about and some of the things not um, uh, digesting properly but bad gut health can be huge in um, 
creating sickness and all kinds of things. Uh, healing starts in the gut. So that is something I talk a lot about as well. Um, that's also why I am doing chaga and some of the mushrooms that I am doing not only to, well, the immune system starts in the gut. So healing the gut and that is why I am taking the mushrooms because I am working to heal my immune system with the turkey tail and the reishi mushrooms. Okay, let's see, quarter in a jar, yes. Yes, that works great for the freezer. And um, can it or if possible, or can it or possibly dehydrate? Yes, for sure. Um, dehydrating freeze drying. I'll tell you what, my friend got one of the Harvest freeze dryers. Wow, 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 wow. I do like eating freeze dried food and I do um, utilize Thrive. Uh, dehydrated foods and freeze-dried foods and you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash thrive but I've never tasted such good freeze-dried as good freeze-dried food as I did from the harvest that you do on, at home it was amazing um, but yes however you can and whatever suits your your family the best preserve your food because preserving your food is going to help you and the longevity of it um, greatly Mimi says dehydrating and vacuum sealing are really good things to do too. I have preserved a lot of food that way, even to the point of having food left over and having to throw it out because it got too old, maybe. I, it ended there, so I couldn't see the whole thing. Hello, Cindy. Okay, just wanted to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. Why, thank you, sweet friend, and right back at you. All right, and Angela says, amen. God is good even when we don't understand what is going on, for sure. And you know what? Sometimes you just got to give up questioning why and what and, and how come and why me. I don't even use those words anymore. When stuff happens, I just roll. I don't question. I don't have, uh, like I said earlier, I don't have, um, just totally went blank on the word, but um, expectations. You know, um, we can't question God. There's purpose in everything. I'm a true believer in that. There is absolute purpose in everything that happens to us, whether it is going to help us personally or whether as a result of our walk it's going to help someone else. So absolutely. You guys are just awesome. So powerful today. So, so powerful. Penny says food issues you were talking about. Okay, yeah. So um, the gut, that stuff corrupts your gut and then you are stuck in a situation of bad health. I mean, a poor poor gut health will actually cause autoimmune issues as well as cancer and other illnesses. So our gut health is important. So eating well, eating good quality food, eating food that is not expired for too long, and preserving our food properly is really, really, really important. Fermented food is really good for your gut too. I can't do fermented foods. I can't do kefir. I can't do kombucha right now because of um, the fungus mold thing. So it really stinks because I had a huge thing of kombucha brewing. So Tammy, are you foraging your mushrooms and turning into powder or making tinctures? Actually, these I purchased from Real Mushrooms. You can find them by going to tryerwilderness.com slash real mushroom. They are out of Canada. And they are utilizing um, the biggest company out of Canada's mushroom um, as its source. They are the purest that you can get. And when you go to the health food store, those are the places that they would recommend to you. Um, I am not growing my own right now. Um, with our chaos, it's just not an option. But I really wanted to try to build my immunity. Um, I actually feel that I might have skin cancer at one spot and I don't have the time or the funds to get out right now to get that checked so that's part of why I'm using the turkey tail um, as well as building my immune system so um, I am going to go get that checked but the thing is I heard really good results with the turkey tail and that it has the ability to heal such things so rather than um, jump on that I wanted to try and see if I could uh, heal it naturally um, so uh, and chaga yes chaga we actually do forage um, our own that is on the uh, birch trees so um, that is a great great mushroom um, I can put some links for some uh, identification videos for foraging that but chaga is awesome chaga is a great cancer fighter anti-cancer and um, just really good tasting. These mushrooms, now the mountain man didn't like it, he felt it was bitter, but I like dark chocolate. 
and I don't mind bitter. Um, bitter actually gets your system going. Um, the bitters cause uh, things to start functioning better in your system. So these mushrooms to me have more of a chocolatey uh, taste to them um, when combined. They're really good. I like them. Um, the only thing missing in my in my drink right now is my cashew milk, but I ran out of my cashew milk. So I do have coconut powder, coconut powder milk, but um, it just doesn't taste as good. So rather than waste that, I just decided to drink it straight. <laughs> but anyway, we've had a long class today. This was awesome. Such great, great stuff. So you guys can see how all of these things that I've been teaching so far this year totally pertain to our future. Not just being organized and, and being, um, you know, hooked up on our iPhones and on our laptops and being efficient. It creates life skills, the life skills that we need to be able to handle what is ahead for us. And I want you guys to be able to not have expectations, to be able to roll with the unexpected, to be able to... Um, Be successful when things fall apart and to just roll with it. Okay. Penny says, yes, lots of research on chaga, rishi, and turkey tail and cancer fighting properties. Yeah, really amazing. Really, really amazing. And the autoimmune, the immune system is the key thing for me um, because my immune system is definitely impaired. I have reactions to things in such weird ways, and I'm trying to rebuild that. And like I said, the other thing is the power of God in this. I have prayed over my body multiple times. The hernia was removed. Other things were removed. The heat from my body was removed when I, before I went for my surgery and never returned. I had it for three years. I mean, it's amazing stuff. And, you know, the power of the, of the mind. You know, I had shared, um, oh, man, I can't think of the, uh, it was a class that was going on in a uh, several-day program and one of the guys was Wim Hof and he was the one he's the polar bear he's the one that dives in the cold arctic waters and has trained his body to handle the cold well I've utilized those skills and I get part of my shower is cold and it doesn't affect me anymore the cold comes on and it just covers my body I don't have to hold my breath or go crazy or it doesn't affect how my body reacts to it. We can train our bodies. We can train our bodies to be well. We can retrain our bodies to heal by our minds. And I do believe that because I am seeing the results of that. So upcoming, there will be some, some of these Facebook lives are going to go really in depth on healing the body because I am working on not just with the mushrooms, but two other practices right now that are helping me. I wanted to do a little further research and um, just see the results myself before I started sharing because I don't like to openly share. I don't share things that I don't trust in either. So, um, But there'll be more on that because there's a great, great ways to heal the body. So you know how to do that and you know how to, to call on God for your needs and in any situation. You can truly do some miraculous things. And I give God all the glory on that because he's directing me to these things too. So Kelly says, Tammy, do you body check things? We find this very useful because our bodies know what we need. Yeah, I do uh, muscle testing and um, I can also um, utilize a couple other applications in testing what my body is able to take. I've also uh, completely removed everything as far as food from my body. And then I uh, in, in have brought it back in. The Daniel Fast has been a blessing to me because it is nourishing food and all of which my body likes. Um, my body is very sensitive to food. Eating has been very overrated for me. Uh, there's like maybe 10 things that I focus on eating most of the time. Um, you got to be careful that your body doesn't kind of get its own al allergic reaction or immunity to foods. So I try to break it up quite a bit, but, um, and, and greens and the Daniel fast is very, very healing, but yes, I do body check a lot and especially with supplements and the different things that I try, um, because there's a lot of different things recommended to me often. And my doctor in Georgia has a really huge gift of healing and she has helped me a lot with that journey. But when I was 14, that was one of the things that I got 
first involved with was muscle testing and iridology and just knowing to listen to your body. And that was one of the first things the doctor said because Austin loved pickles and, and tart things. And he said that especially in children, they know what their body needs. So if they're craving something odd, it's because their body needs something in it. And pickles were very good. Um, it's a fermented food, you know, it, um, and, and uh, the acids and stuff are good for the digestive system. So it's just pretty interesting, but yes, very much so. And it's important because uh, I feel, especially where I'm at with all that I've got going on, you know, I've got to be really kind to my body and not overdo it and overdo things to it. As a matter of fact, I wanted to mention this too. For those of you out there that are dealing with the same thing that I am, one of the things I have found is that my body is handling the shoveling very well, but what is happening is I am excreting silicone in a very um, heavy way. Um, it's really crazy. And um, what happens is my body feels rigid and I can take my fingernails and it feels like I'm pulling shards of glass out of my skin. So I still have silicone in my body and it is excreting and coming out of the skin, which I am greatly celebrating. And later today I will soak in a needle soak, which is something that is sticky, that actually pulls that out of my system. It's really quite amazing. So while I am shoveling and stirring things up, I'm going to try to really detox heavily. So that's awesome and a great celebration. So, so many good things, so much going on, so much good stuff, and our perspective and our way of handling them is going to make life so much easier, not just in our day-to-day -day living, but whenever anything comes down the pike. So guys, I really want to encourage you to realize that fine-tuning these skills that I'm sharing with you will make your life so much less stressful when... Um, things get out of hand. So keep that in mind. I'm going to read something to you today. I think this was the one. Yes. Okay. Nehemiah 4.6. The people had a heart to work. It takes heart. In San Diego, there's a famous attraction called SeaWorld. If you go there, you can see ducks on roller skates, but when you get close to them, you realize that their hearts aren't in it. You may smile, but a lot of people are like that. Just going through the motions. Don't be one of them. If you want your life to count, find a cause greater than yourself and give your all to it. Do you recall the story of Nehemiah? He risked life and limb in order to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Even though faced with threats and obstacles, he finished a job in record time. How did it happen? Because the people had a heart to, had a heart to work. In 1828, copy of Webster's Dictionary defines courage as that quality which enables us to face difficulty and danger without fear or depression. Then Webster adds the words of Moses as he transferred leadership of the nation to Joshua. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Okay, first, I have to say, I am like so fascinated that the Webster's Dictionary had Bible verses in it. That is just so cool. That is so cool. I would love to see that. Okay, and then at age 120, Moses was still telling the people of Israel, you got to have heart. Why? Because anything worth having is worth fighting for. It takes heart to deal with a child's willful defiance or face your own fears or pick up the pieces of your life and start over. It's easy to talk about what's wrong, but it takes heart to do something about it. And where does that kind of courage fr come from? God. So talk to him today. I just thought this was really fitting because we need to have heart and we need to... Uh, have courage that quality which enables us to face difficulty and danger without fear or depression so building ourselves up to a place that we are rock solid on God and ready for whatever comes our way and it is these simple skills put into place daily made habits and learning the, the life skills of just handling the unexpected and not having expectations and first and foremost, more than anything, looking to God always for direction. I just think this is very fitting and very outstanding. And be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go, guys. I wish 
that you all could see the things that we've walked out already. You know, I share, we do our videos, but our day-to-day -day is where it's happening. And the only way you guys would see that is if we had a 24-7 camera on, that you could see how the world falls apart in the morning and how God just builds it back up by the end of the day. I mean, it's just awing. It's just awing. The, the stuff that has been happening to our family. That's why I said a book is coming because this has just been beyond words and beyond expression to me at times. So Chad says, I'm just going to say this. God came down to earth in the form of his son, Jesus, lived as perfect man on earth and he gave himself as a, a living sacrifice for our sins. He died and three days later rose. Now it stopped there, but that's just it. God died for all of our sins. He is there for us. He loves us. He died for everybody. And we all have the same opportunity. We are all saved in all honesty. We have all been saved. We have human choice to accept that we've been saved and understand that we are worthy of his love because he died for our, our, our love and his love for us. So... Guys, you have the choice today that if you are not looking to God for your direction, that you can be just like the rest of us. You were saved and accepted and loved just as we were. And it's an amazing, amazing gift. And I, like I said, I just couldn't imagine my life any other way. Thank you for sharing that, Chad. Absolutely need to have heart and wisdom. Both come from God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this has just been such a good conversation. And I'm just so grateful for you all because you add so much to the table in these conversations. And you also inspire some of the future classes that we have too. You know, our conversations, they're growth. We grow in, in learning from one another and, and, um, being there for one another, praying for one another, and and loving each other as we are. You know, it's such an awesome thing. And and that's that's the same thing that we have from God, that he loves us wholeheartedly always, and that he is not the creator of evil. He does not do evil things. This planet has the enemy on it, and the enemy is what is uh, dominant here unless we call God into it. And we are removing God from everything. And that was part of my post this last week was that, you know, we are removing God from everything. And then we wonder why everything's falling apart and, and going to crap in a handbasket and why things are being approved that shouldn't be even an option and all that crazy stuff. So I encourage you, you know, share your testimony with people, share your experiences with people. You know, we need to be a light through us being a light to others. We can pull more people in to the greatest blessings on this earth. And the thing is, we need to call to him. We need to call to him regularly because the enemy is going to seek and seep in. I'm going to read, I'm going to read this one quick. Since we are talking about that. And then I'm going to jump off because the mountain man needs some help out there. Today is Wednesday. Where are we? Okay. I'm pretty sure this is it. Yep. Okay, Ephesians 2, 6, he picked us up and set us down in highest heaven in company with Jesus. Be an up person. In order to become an up person, you must do these three things. One, expand your concept of God. How? By reading his word and getting to know him better. Be like the little boy in Sunday school whose teacher asked what he was drawing, and he replied, God. The teacher said, but nobody knows what God's like. Confidently, he replied, then you will when I'm finished. What is your God like? Loving or judgmental? Distant or available? Limited or powerful? Your concept of God will determine your confidence in him. So spend time getting to know him. And it says that, but I'm going to add in his word. Two, recognize Satan's limitations. The devil is the world's oldest loser, a former employee of heaven who got fired because of arrogance and who is headed for destruction. And the only power he has over you is the power you give him by remaining ignorant of his devices. The Bible says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So much truth in that. You have power over Satan. Use it. Guys, you got to tell him to get lost when he's wrecking your world because he's going to try every day to wreck it. 
Three, see yourself as God sees you. He sees you not just as you are, but as you will be. If you've been conditioned by past experiences to see yourself as worthless, starting now you can change your self-image by believing what God says about you in his word. When you have his opinion, what else matters? And you can read Jeremiah 29, 11, Isaiah 43, 1 through 3, and Ephesians 2, 6. As you work on these three things each day, you'll become an up person in a down world. So I thought that was perfect and very fitting for what we were talking about. Hate to run, but have an animal emergency to handle. Love you all. I'm praying for you daily. Bye, everyone. See you, Kelly. Love you, girlfriend. I'm going to pray, and, and you guys can get back to your day-to-day. And Kelly said also, absolutely need to have heart and wisdom both come from God. All right, guys. I'm going to say a prayer here. Papa, I just thank you for being present today and for your word and your promises, your mercy and your grace every day to all of us. And, and Lord, I just thank you for so many that have accepted you and look towards you for guidance and direction. And I ask that those that are following maybe quietly um, in the wings or that don't know God like, like we do, I ask that they that you help them to pull toward you and to find that relationship. There is so much, so much benefit to walking a life with you. And I just can't express the awe and gratitude, the thanks, the, oh, just so, so many positive words to our life right now. It has been a long journey, but you've been present. You are never away from us. You are always there and you are always working miracles on our half, fighting for our behalf. And, and Lord, I just thank you for what you do in our lives. And I hope that, uh, you are using us as a vessel to help others and that they can blatantly see your hand in our lives. And Lord, I give you all the glory for all things said in these Facebook lives and and the way you direct the conversation and what you do, I know you're so present and I just thank you for what you're going to do, not only in our lives, but everyone that watches this video. And Lord, I just thank you and just ask that you keep everyone safe and healthy and looking upon you and just be with all those in need. Our prayer list is getting longer and longer and there's so many that need your help. So many that could use your arms wrapped around them today. So, Lord, I just ask that you lift them all up. You know their needs, their concerns, and all their names are present. And, Lord, I just thank you again for what you're going to do in our lives. And I ask this in your holy and precious name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys, i got to get out there and shovel and help my man. So you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love, your prayers and for contributing. We have an amazing community forming here and 